A blast's effects can range from the breaking of a window to the destruction of entire cities, with the effects that last years after that. These explosions can simply be a botched science lab experiment or the nuclear bombings like of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. With the increasing number of conflicts around the world, one can say that a nuclear war might spring up soon. With that around us, one thing has definitely gotten into our minds. What happens to the Earth after a nuclear war, or what if all the bombs are detonated at the same time? Will that be the end of us, or will we survive? Hold on to your seats, because today we are going to find out the answer to the scariest and most destructive question ever. Nuclear war was identified as the top threat in a January 2018 World Economic Forum survey of a thousand leaders from government, business and other industries. It's understandable that people are worried. A few years ago, it appeared that a nuclear war between the United States and North Korea was on the horizon. India and Pakistan, two nuclear-armed foes, could reignite their decades-long feud at any time. And the United States and Russia, the world's two most powerful nuclear powers, have had warheads aimed at each other since the Cold War's inception. This concern got the people worried, and they just need an answer to what happens to the Earth if every nuclear weapon-holding country fights and detonates all their bombs at the same time, and should they be worried? Well, they should be. What happened in Japan is known to all, but that was just 36 kilotons of TNT. Now listen to this. Nine countries in the world possess a total of almost 15,000 nuclear weapons. The United States and Russia account for 90% of them. China, Pakistan, UK, France, India, Israel and North Korea constitute the remaining 10%. Can you imagine how much destructive power this is? A typical US warhead has the destructive power of 2,000 tons of TNT. So 15,000 warheads are equal to more than 3 billion tons of TNT. Such a massive amount of TNT would be enough to rebuild the entire city of Manhattan, including buildings and skyscrapers with TNT stacks. Among the natural disasters, we can compare this energy to a volcano. The 1883 volcanic eruption of Krakatoa was one of the deadliest and most destructive volcanic events in recorded history. It was so powerful that over 70% of the island of Krakatoa and its surrounding archipelago were destroyed as it collapsed into a caldera. Significant additional effects were also felt around the world in the days and weeks after the volcano's eruption. The combination of pyroclastic flows, volcanic ash and tsunamis associated with the Krakatoa eruptions had disastrous regional consequences. Some land in Banten, approximately 90 kilometers south, was never repopulated. It reverted to the jungle and is now a national park. The official death toll recorded by the Dutch authorities was 36,417. All the nuclear bombs the world has are almost 15 times more destructive than the Krakatoa eruption. Now can you imagine the damage? Let's consider this. On Earth, there are approximately 4,500 cities or urban areas with a population of at least 100,000 people. With our nuclear arsenal, we could destroy every city on the planet, killing over 3 billion people. On average, it will be a three nuclear bombs job to destroy the entire city. It means if we have to destroy every city on Earth, it can be done in an instant, killing roughly half of humanity. And surprisingly, we would still be left with some nuclear bombs. This just clears one thing, the amount of damage we can have with these bombs. Now, if we make a pile of all the nuclear weapons and detonate them at once, for instance in the forest of the Amazon, then in a fraction of a second, a fireball 50 kilometers across vaporizes everything in its path and creates a blast wave that flattens 3,000 square kilometers of forest. Every living thing within a 250 km radius will begin to burn. This explosion will literally be heard all around the world, as the pressure waves circle the Earth tens of times over the next few weeks. The mushroom cloud reaches the greatest heights of the stratosphere, pushing up against space itself. The explosion would make a crater around 10 km across and 2 km deep. The huge volume of debris injected into the atmosphere would have far more widespread effects. 
This aerosol of particles would reduce the amount of heat reaching the Earth's surface from the Sun, resulting in a nuclear winter with several environmental consequences. The nuclear explosion would also cause a surge in electromagnetic energy that would destroy everything from national power grids to microchips all over the world. Extreme levels of radiation would also cause harm, killing all living things. From the crater to hundreds of kilometers downwind, everything would become uninhabitable. Let's move to reality and not detonate all the bombs at once. If at least two small nuclear power countries are at war, then tens of millions of people are killed in the explosions. That dreadful scenario is only the beginning. The smoke from the incinerated cities rises high into the atmosphere, blanketing the planet in soot and blocking the sun's rays. The planet becomes extremely cold. Crops have been withering for years from California to China. Famine breaks out all over the world. This bleak vision of a possible future is based on the most recent research on how nuclear war could alter global climate. They build on previous research on a nuclear winter or the severe global cooling that researchers predict would occur after a major nuclear war. Only a small nuclear war between India and Pakistan could lead to crops failing in dozens of countries, devastating food supplies for more than 1 billion people. According to research, a nuclear winter would drastically alter the chemistry of the oceans, likely decimating coral reefs and other marine ecosystems. These findings are the result of the most comprehensive study yet of how a nuclear war would affect the entire Earth system, from the oceans to the atmosphere to creatures on land and at sea. The worst effects would be felt in the mid-latitudes, including breadbasket regions such as the United States Midwest and Ukraine. Grain reserves would be depleted within a year or two. Most countries would be unable to import food from other regions due to crop failures in their own countries. It is the most detailed examination of how the aftermath of a nuclear war would affect food supplies ever undertaken. The researchers did not specify how many people would starve, but they claim that the ensuing famine would be worse than any in recorded history. Farmers may respond by planting maize, wheat and soya beans in areas of the world that are less likely to be affected by a nuclear winter. Such changes may help to mitigate food shock, but only to a certain extent. The bottom line is that a war involving less than 1% of the world's nuclear arsenal could devastate the world's food supply. The cold, dark oceans would begin to contain less aragonite two to five years after the nuclear conflict, putting the organisms at risk. Some of the most dramatic changes in aragonite occurred in coral reef habitats such as the southwestern Pacific Ocean and the Caribbean Sea in the simulations. This implies that coral reef ecosystems, which are already under stress due to warming and acidification of the oceans, could be particularly hard hit during a nuclear winter. Scientists are interested in these issues because the nuclear threat is growing. Nuclear weapons are being developed by countries ranging from North Korea to Iran. And some countries, including the United States, are abandoning arms control efforts. In contrast to the overall nuclear weapons inventory, the number of warheads in global military stockpiles, which includes warheads assigned to operational forces, is increasing once more. The United States is still gradually reducing its nuclear arsenal. France and Israel's inventories are relatively stable. However, it is believed that China, India, North Korea, Pakistan and the United Kingdom, as well as possibly Russia, are all increasing their stockpiles. As the number increases, the destruction increases. Even if we don't die of all the nuclear weapons exploding at once, we might die of hunger due to a nuclear war between two small countries. With that, we have come to the end of our video. What do you think of this? Are we going to see a nuclear war soon and see our own destruction? Let us know in the comment section below. If you like the content, do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more informative videos. Until next time, take care and thank you for watching.